Welcome back to the shop. Today we'll be talking about end mills and some of the basic characteristics to help you decide which ones to use for your next project. So what are end mills? Well, we generally refer to end mills as the cutting tool used in the router or spindle of your CNC machine. They're sort of like drill bits, but unlike drill bits, end mills can cut sideways and up and down. When we combine the right end mill with your CNC machine, you can make just about anything. There are tons of different cutting tools and end mills that the long mill can use, all of which have different shapes, sizes, materials, and purposes. Before we get into that, however, let's go into some common terminology. The overall length refers to the total length of the end mill. You can measure this by finding the length between each end of the bit, the overall length of the end mill is important because it can determine how deep you can cut, as well as the rigidity of the end mill itself. The shank diameter refers to the overall diameter of the part of the end mill that is smooth, which we call the shank. Typically, this is where we mount the end mill to the router or the spindle. Most end mills will, you'll see will come with a standard range of sizes, such as quarter inch or eighth inch. The cutting diameter determines the diameter of the cutting path that the end mill will take. You can measure this by finding the, the distance between each flute or finding the diameter of the cutting area. It should be noted that in some cases, the cutting diameter may be different sizes depending on if the flutes are symmetric or not. The flute length refers to the sharpened cutting area on the end mill. In most cases, this will determine the maximum depth of cut you can take per pass, and if you have a shorter flute length, each cutting pass may have to be smaller. Most end mills will have flutes of some sort, which are like the blades of the end mill. Your flute count is the number of flutes there are per bit. In this case, there's three. And in this one, we just have the one. So we'll use some of these terminologies throughout the video and we'll use those to help you choose the right end mills for your project. Flat end mills, also known as straight or square end mills, are bits that have a flat bottom profile. Within these family of bits, you'll find a couple different end mills, but the three I want to cover are upcut, downcut, and compression bits. An upcut end mill has a spiral of the end mill pulling material upwards. These are good with materials that are prone to burning or melting, such as plastic and certain types of wood. This is because the material is pulled away from the cut. Downcut bits, on the other hand, pulls material downwards, compacting the material into the cut. The benefit of this is that when you're working with materials that are prone to chipping, such as plywood, the downward shearing of the material leaves a cleaner edge. This also put, keeps the chips inside the cut, preventing the material from moving around. However, because the material is pushed into the cut, the, material, the chips are prone to burning as well as rubbing against the bit. Lastly, compression bits combine both types of end mills. The bottom portion of the bit draws chips upwards while the top portion of the bit draws chips downwards. This means that if you're cutting materials that are prone to chipping on both sides, then a compression bit can leave a cleaner edge on the bottom as well as on the top. Compression bits are really great for plywood and other materials that are prone to chipping and splintering. These types of bits are best for cutting 2D shapes or projects that have flat bottoms. You can usually find them in different sizes for lift different levels of detail. As a special mention, I'd like to show you guys the surfacing bit. This, these bits are flat, but they have a wider, flatter cutting surface, which are used for flattening materials as well as leveling your sur surface board by taking wide and shallow cuts. Ball nose end mills are called as such for their round or ball nose shaped tips. By using techniques such as raster carving, which takes back and forth cuts small increments at a time, you can make three smooth 3D carvings. Larger ball nose end mills can be used for making trays, 
which leaves a bottom filleted edge on the bottom of the vessel. Next, we'll be talking about tapered end mills, which is a special type of ball nose end mill. Mills are tapered end mills, a special type of ball nose bit. Tapered bits are called as such because of their tapered shape. Tapered bits are tapered down to a smaller radius, which allows to have a stronger shape to prevent breaking, but have a smaller radius that can do finer, more delicate cuts. By taking small back and forth passes, one can create very intricate 3D carvings. V-bits, sometimes called chamfer bits or engraving bits, are end mills with a V-shaped cutting edge. V-bits come in a large variety of angles, but the most common are 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degrees, which refer to the angle of the cutting edge. V-bits are commonly used for a technique called V-carving. By constantly varying the depth of cut with the Z-axis, we can vary the width of the groove that the V-bit cuts. This technique is really handy for doing projects like signs, lettering, and other artistic designs, especially if they need a lot of detail. We've now covered some of the most common types of end mills. Depending on your project, you can either choose to use one or alternate between different bits to use their strengths and abilities. If you're shopping for end mills and bits for the first time, I'd like to make a shameless plug by mentioning our end mill sets from our store. These sets are designed for different types of projects. For example, if you're looking to do signs, the sign maker's end mill set might be the perfect affordable and high quality option for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.